Hello everyone and welcome. In today's video, I'm tackling another build commission. This time the customer wants a 124 scale RC replica of the Mustang from the 1993 film Menace to Society. From my extensive and exhaustive research, aka taking a trip over to the Internet Movie Cars database, it appears to be a stock 91 or 92 deep emerald green Mustang GT convertible with wire wheels. So not only should this be a simple, straightforward build, but I'm also a huge fan of the Fox Body Mustangs, so I was very excited to dive into this project. Before I begin, I want to remind everyone who's interested in doing a similar build that I've included links to the products and STL files used below in the description. So if you'd like to build a car like I am here, be sure to check them out. Let's start by having a look at the model kit that I'll be using for this build. It's a Revell 1992 Ford Mustang GT convertible lowrider, which should look pretty much visibly identical to the car from the movie, minus the crazy wheel spacing of course. I believe this specific lowrider Mustang kit was originally released in the early 2000s, and it's been reissued a couple times with different box art and decals. The latest being in 2006, so these models have been long out of production, but can still be found without too much trouble, albeit you might have to pay a premium as I did to get this one. Let's take a look at what's inside. First impressions of the kit are that it looks great. Everything looks well molded and there is some fantastic detail. It would have been cool if they included the tires and decals needed to make a stock Mustang, but at least the wire wheels they included are pretty nice, though I will be printing my own. I can tell you from the future that the car went together quite well and with all the parts fitting nicely together. Really can't complain about this kit, I definitely recommend one if you can get it for the right price. So with the model kit unboxed and everything looking nice, let's move on to the chassis. I'll be using a FPUC1 chassis for this build for several reasons. First it's inexpensive and easy to print while still being a lot of fun to drive. It's also brutally simple and easy to assemble with basically nothing to maintain, and it sits very low which will give me more room for the interior and the electronics that will go below it. That's great for this build since it's a convertible. The only downside is that just like with the RX-7 I built a while back, the chassis will be somewhat visible below the body as it will sit below the rocker panels. With all the chassis parts I'll need printed, I used one of the hardware kits we offer which contains all the screws, axles, and bearings I'll need to build the chassis. I then begin by assembling the front end. The wire wheels on the movie car stick out a little beyond the fenders, so I'll be pushing the wheels out further than where they would be if stock though I can't go too far out or else I'd have to remove quite a bit of material from the wheel arches to make room for the wheels to turn left and right. I then assembled the rear motor and axle mount assembly and positioned it so the wheelbase is correct for this body. I did need to install a longer rear axle shaft, which is what I'm doing here.
I also needed to remove some sections of the front inner fenders and firewall so the front of the body can sit low enough. Already the fitment is looking pretty good, so next I wanted to start test fitting the interior to see what modifications would need to be made. I also started to brainstorm where I was going to place all of the electronics. Again, we offer a convenient compatible electronics set linked below. Before I go any further, I wanted to install the steering linkage and steering servo since I knew some modifications to the body and interior would be necessary for them to fit. Fortunately, I didn't need to do a ton of hacking, I just marked a few areas that needed removed and then cut them out. I really like using a hot knife for some of these cuts. Again, not too much hacking was necessary thanks to the low sitting chassis. Once the seats and dash are in, it will be less visible than it is here. I decided to go one size narrower in the front. I was a little concerned about the clearance that the front wheels would have to steer, so I made the front just a little narrower. I also cut off the excess front axle length and glued the wheel mounts into place. Here's a look at the completed front end. I next finished up the rear by mounting the motor and positioning the rear wheel mounts. There's just enough room to squeeze the ESC between the bottom of the interior and the chassis. I did need to remove the case and then began the fun process of figuring out how I was going to route all of the wires and make it all fit. I did need to remove a chunk of the rear seat so the gears will have enough room. I also sanded and trimmed a few spots on the bottom of the interior tub just to get every millimeter of clearance that I could.
here's where the chassis and car is at so far. The last thing to mount is the receiver, which will go under the hood. I just used a little super glue to keep it solidly in place on the very front. If you're wondering where the battery will go, you'll see in just a bit. I plan on using Velcro to secure it to the body just under the trunk as there's tons of room there. With all of the electronics in place, I'm now ready to make the body mounts. I used styrene tubing and magnets just as I've done on previous projects. With the magnetic mounts, all it takes to remove the body is just gently pulling it off. So far, so good. At this point, I was eager to drive the car for the first time. This is the AX5S transmitter I'm using for this build. It's just a basic three-channel transmitter that will work well for this car. It's definitely more of a budget transmitter, but it feels pretty good, and I like the throttle limit switch it has on the top. I plugged both the ESC and steering servo into the correct spots on the receiver, and then powered on the car. As you can see here, I needed to reposition the servo arm as it was way off center, but after that the car was ready to drive. I will need to do a little work around the wheel arches to make enough room for the wheels to turn to full lock, but at this point I was ready to do a quick test drive. As you can see, the car is working great. I installed the two rear motor mount screws and tidied up the wires with some zip ties. At this point, the chassis is complete and fully functioning, and the body mounts are in place. 
All that's left to do now is to paint the car and finish assembling the body, which I'll be covering in the next video of this build series. Make sure you subscribe to this channel if you haven't already, so you don't miss the conclusion of this build. You can also become a channel member by clicking the join button below, or becoming a member on Patreon for early access to videos and other perks, as well as helping make more videos like this possible. Thank you all very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.